When I was really small, I used to go back to the house and I'd go in there and just wander around. It was always full, it was always busy of, with kids. Well, with nine kids, it was busy. <laughs> and Dad had a shop over there. I remember Dad a lot. I remember following Dad and so that I could have time alone with him. Dad had a way of making kids feel really special, so you always wanted to be with him. Mom was a quieter, friendly person. Like, if you were her friend, you were her friend for life. They were uh, very uh, family-oriented. Spent most all of their time doing things with the kids. I think our house was centered around the kids because that's what they both loved so much. We didn't really need to go anywhere to find our entertainment. It was fun. It was. It would have been a great place to grow up. It was a pretty little house. So this would have been the kitchen, and that was Mom and Dad's room back there. All of us kids, except for the babies, stayed in one room. And this I remember this Christmas. That was the Christmas before I was married. This that was, was our last Christmas, wasn't it? That was our last Christmas, yeah. My oldest sister left when I was married the day we left to go out to BC. She was crying and said, uh, I will never see you again. And I thought, oh, yes, you will. I mean, I'm coming back. But I guess she was right. They say that he's insane. He must be because no sane person could do what he's done. Well, Victor Hoffman was a loner. He stuck to himself. He had very few friends, uh, a very strong uh, religious background in his home. He drove into the yard and um, he came to the door. Now, I don't know whether he knocked on the door or not, but they were all still in bed sleeping and he simply walked into the house. And knowing my father, as soon as someone did that, he would be startled awake. Uh, Mr. Peterson, a brave man protecting his family, advanced toward Victor. And uh, Dad and him were fighting here in the kitchen. Um, I remember Dad yelling at us kids to stay in bed, that we weren't supposed to get out of bed. And Dad was fighting with him, and he actually shot my dad seven times before my dad died. After he killed Dad, he went outside to reload his gun, and he found Mom out there. And she had taken the baby and crawled out the window of their room with seven other kids in the house that are screaming and crying and she can't go back in and help them. They say that he shot mom first and left the baby and then he went back in the house and shot the rest of the kids and in amongst that time he shot the baby too. I remember hearing him opening our dresser drawers and I guess at four, you're not sure what's going on, but I had lost my fingernail, smacked in the car, and I thought that's what he was there for, was to steal my fingernail, because I had saved it. Like, I remember looking at my sister. I think I was gonna ask her what we should do, or what was going on, and um, when I looked at her, then I knew she was dead. I was scared. I kind of cuddled up to my sister and stayed there. I don't, I don't think I moved. I, in fact, I remember trying not to breathe. He, uh, in total, shot 27 rounds, the father seven times, the mother four, and 16 bullets into those children. And I remember hearing the policeman come in, but I didn't know who it was. And he lifted the blankets off me, and then I was really, really scared because I didn't know it was a policeman. And when he carried me out, he was crying, so I knew that it was really bad. Um, I remember seeing my dad on the floor. We didn't really know what had happened. We only knew there was one survivor. We didn't know who. Kathy was 19. She had to drive actually from BC all the way to Saskatchewan, knowing that her family, her entire family had been killed except for one. It was, it was a horrible drive because we had the radio on and we kept hearing news stories, but 
nothing that really told us any more than what we'd already been told. It was the largest manhunt in Saskatchewan history. It's fair to say that nobody in that region slept that night. Everybody was just terrified. It didn't make any sense what had taken place. And I've never seen uh, people carrying as many weapons as I did that night. I remember being, being scared because there was so many policemen around and um, like we had policemen outside the house where I was staying and they were afraid that he was going to come back. And I felt so bad because of the look on her face, how frightened she was. She knew there was no one left. She didn't understand why, or I don't think she really understood fully what had happened. But she knew. I just held her and said, I'm here. You have me. I was the only thing she had left, and she just hung on. Among hundreds of tips that the RCMP received was one that a farm boy from Leask had recently been released from the mental hospital. And it proved to be a fruitful lead because ultimately Hoffman was, uh, was confronted and then arrested. Victor Ernest Hoffman is a paranoid schizophrenic. Uh, Victor had... Uh, had never been to Shell Lake before, did not know the Peterson family. He believed that while he was shooting, that he was killing the devil. It's insanity um, personified. I know Victor's parents took him to the hospital and, and they tried to make the doctors listen to them that, that he was a sick man and they wouldn't listen. And it was less than three weeks later that Victor got up in the middle of the night, jumped in a car, went down the road, and murdered nine members of the James Peterson family. I remember our going to the cemetery and, and sitting there throughout the service. It was just a blur. It was just a horrible day that had to be got through. A fella stayed behind at my aunt's house because I just felt that this is not a place where she needs to be at this point. She had very bad dreams for a few months after everything happened. Most of my childhood I didn't sleep because I was too scared to sleep. We moved to BC and her and her husband had just got married. They were married for a month and they had a four-year-old kid. Her name was different than the other kids used to, grade one and grade two, as they would say. Well, you don't have a mom and dad. And she came home one night kind of crying about it. And she said, could I call you mom and dad? And I said, well, sure you can. She had a hard time growing up without that. Like she had her sister, but it's, it's just not the same. It was just, you need that, your parents and, your, and the stability, hey? And I don't think she found that. She started questioning and wondering and things like that. Like, why did this happen to me? As a teenager, it was just too hard to deal with. It was, it was scary. I, you know, I remember one time um, going uptown at noon during school and one of the girls had said, so some, some guy in a green truck was looking for you. Well, I was terrified. I was panicked because I thought, who would be looking for me? Nobody would be looking for me, so it must be him because I had no idea where he was. Uh, Victor Ernest Hoffman uh, is in custody. Uh, Victor has been medicated uh, since 1967. His condition, according to the authorities, has worsened over the past few years. The mistake was not listening to someone who was very, very sick and not, not helping him and his family. And I don't want our, our system to forget the mistake that was made, and I don't want him to do it again. There were letters of hate to the Hoffman family. They didn't get the sympathy of the world like we did. They got all the, the taunts and the, the backlash from it. So I, I have a lot of pity for his family. I feel sorry for them. They had a pretty tough go of it, too. Well, I talked to his sister. The thing that she said to me that stuck in my mind, every time that something bad would happen in our family, she said, I always thought it was you wishing those things to happen. And I mean, that was the first thing from my mind. 
you grow up not